Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at surface area to volume ratio. We're going to talk about surface area and how to calculate it, then volume and how to calculate it, uh, how to put these into a ratio, and I'll show you a couple of examples here, and then we're then going to talk about uh, why this surface area to volume ratio is important and why it keeps popping up. So we'll talk about the restriction of cell size, uh, membrane sizes, and food size. So firstly, surface area is the amount of area exposed on the surface and I don't like defining things with the words that are in them but these are pretty basic concepts so uh, when when we have the surface area say we have a cube we pull that cube apart to find the net and we have six squares one on each side of the cube uh, and in combination they make up the surface area relating this to cells so when we're talking about the surface area of a cell, we're talking about how big the cell membrane is around the cell, okay, because that's the part of the cell that is exposed uh, to other things. Volume is the amount of 3D space that an object occupies. So when we're talking about cells, we're talking about how much stuff, okay, so cytoplasm, organelles, all those things that are inside a cell, how much of that stuff is in the cell. And the volume of a cube is the size cubed, funnily enough, uh, or the height the width, times the width times the length. But if it's a cube, all those three will be the same, so you can just times that by uh, itself twice. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples of this surface area and volume, and then we can put them into a ratio. Okay, so firstly we have a cube here, which has sides that are one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, they're all one centimeter, it's a cube. Okay, so surface area, To work out the surface area, we get the sides of the cube, so that is 1 times 1. And there are 6 sides of the cube, so we times that all by 6, giving us a surface area of 6 centimetres cubed. Now as far as volume goes, we're looking at the three-dimensional space here. So we get the height times the width times the length and we find that it is one cubic centimeter which makes complete sense so in our surface area to volume ratio we have a surface area of six and a volume of one okay so this is the basic one let's move okay so now we have a bigger cube this time we've got a cube that is two centimeters by two centimeters so to work out the surface area it will be two times two times the six sides giving us 24 centimeters cubed uh, to work out the volume we times the height two times the length times the width giving us eight centimeters cubed uh, making our surface area to volume ratio 24 to 8. Or we can, oh, let's make that an 8, yep. Or we can uh, simplify that into 3 to 1. Okay, last one. We have a cube that is 3 centimeters in size. So, surface area is going to be 3 by 3 by 6. should be seeing a pattern here. Uh, that makes 54 centimetres cubed. Our volume is going to be 3 by 3 by 3, giving us 27 centimetres cubed. Uh, so our surface area to volume ratio of this cube is going to be 54 to 27 or 2 is to 1. Okay, so there's our three cubes, how to work out surface area, how to work out volume, and how to put that into a surface area to volume ratio. Okay, so our three cubes, we had 6 to 1 for the 1 by 1, for the 2 by 2 by 2, 3 to 1, and for the 3 by 3 by 3, 2 to 1. So you can see that as the size of the cube increases, the surface area to volume ratio decreases. Okay, so now that we've worked out what surface area to volume ratio is and how to calculate it, 
what's the point? So remember I said that the volume is the amount of stuff inside a cell. So the amount of cytoplasm, the amount of things that need nutrients like your mitochondria, like your chloroplasts, all those things. The surface area is the amount of membrane around that cell. So the larger that a cell becomes, the smaller the surface area to volume ratio, meaning the less efficient the cell becomes at getting nutrients from the environment. So there's less surface area, left, less membrane, uh, but there is more volume, more actual things that need those nutrients. And this is the reason that unicellular organisms are all small and that anything bigger than a unicellular organism has to be multicellular. So you have to have multiple uh, cells with each of those having its own surface area or its own cell membrane uh, to decrease that surface area to volume ratio. Another place that uh, surface area to volume ratio comes up in is membrane size. So we've got a whole heap of things inside the cell that we've already talked about. Uh, we've talked about uh, photosynthesis occurring in the chloroplasts, respiration occurring in the mitochondria, and reactions such as protein synthesis occurring on the endoplasmic reticulum. So the more surface area that any of these things have, or the more membrane, uh, the more of the reaction that can occur. So for example, of photosynthesis in chloroplasts, the more surface area that there are inside that chloroplast, there is rather inside the chloroplast, the more photosynthesis is going to happen. So the more small thylakoid disks that are found inside the chloroplast, the larger the surface area and the more photosynthesis. And that's why we'll remember that inside the chloroplast are these flattened stacks of membranes. So these stacks mean that there is a very high surface area to a fairly small volume inside those disks. And the same thing is true for mitochondria, where we have that uh, internal structure of the folded membrane. And for the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus, where there are lots of membrane and they're quite flat, so that there's not a lot of volume between that actual membrane. So more reactions can occur. Another place where surface area to volume ratio comes up, and this is getting into more of the chemical side of it, uh, but when chemical breakdown of a substance occurs, it occurs at the active site for that is the surface. So the more surface area for a fixed volume, the easier it is for chemical breakdown to occur. So what this means is that when you chew something, your teeth break that thing down into very small pieces, increasing the surface area, but keeping the volume the same. So therefore, there's more sites for that reaction to that chemical digestion reaction to occur, uh, and it occurs more efficiently. All right, this has been a long one. In this video, we've talked about surface area being the amount of exposed area on the surface of an object. We've talked about the volume of an object being how much three-dimensional space that an object takes up. Uh, we've talked about the surface area to volume ratio, how to calculate it for cubes, and the general rule that as things get bigger, the surface area to volume ratio gets smaller. And the restriction that this puts on cell size, causing unicellular organisms to be small, because the smaller a cell is, the more efficient it is at getting nutrients from the environment. Uh, having large membranes so that there's a large surface area to volume ratio within organelles such as the chloroplasts, uh, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi body and mitochondria, and the increase of surface area to volume ratio that is done by teeth uh, in the mechanical digestion causing food to be smaller so that that chemical digestion can occur. Thanks for sticking with me guys. Peace out.